Today in Engineering Newswire, we're figuring out how 3D printing is gonna affect our future, steering our headlights with our eyes, and creating the new Rube Goldberg machine. This thing is awesome. This guy is like my new hero. Great. Pots! Imagine driving a car at night and directing your headlamps with your eyes. Sounds a little freaky, right? Well, engineers at Opel Vauxhall are developing automotive lighting with eye tracking technology. The firm's current headlight technology, known as adaptive forward lighting, has 10 lighting functions that include automotive activation of full beam, different lighting patterns for different driving situations, and aiming headlight beams around corners based on a car's steering. However, its new eye tracking technology, which has been in production for about two years, uses a camera that monitors prominent points in a driver's face, like your nose and eyes, to detect the driver's line of sight. Meanwhile, peripheral infrared sensors and central photodiodes scan the driver's eyes more than 50 times per second at dusk and at night. The system allows the driver to adjust the direction of the headlight beams, and reportedly, the system can adjust beam intensity too. An algorithm was also developed to smooth the movement of headlight beams when a driver's eyes dart around, and the firm has created headlight actuators that can react instantaneously on horizontal and vertical planes. Best of all, the headlight system can work with any driver without the need to be recalibrated, and a low beam is programmed to ensure sufficient illumination even if the driver is distracted from the road. Seth Goldstein has been building instruments and machines for more than 50 years, and now some are calling him the new Rube Goldberg. The MIT engineer spent most of his career working at the National Institutes of Health, where he served as a chief of the mechanical engineering section for nearly two decades. Since retiring, he hasn't been golfing or napping all day, which I do already, but instead is using his skills to create kinetic sculpture machines. His most recent sculpture is the Robo, a machine that plays a standard full-sized violin. Played by four mechanical fingers, the violin is placed under a violin bow, rotating to hit the right notes. The violin is powered by the system's motors and is controlled by a computer that receives input from a MIDI file generated from music originally played on an electric keyboard. The device is also capable of vibrato, legato, note loudness modulation, in addition to various other bowing effects. But this is not his first try at this. His previous projects include a kinetic sculpture that continually ties and unties a necktie. And Cram Guy, featuring a sleepy studier cramming for exams and dreaming of Jessica Simpson. He is currently rigging a six foot long model of the clipper ship Cuddy Sark, which he has built from scratch. I think it's safe to say that this guy is pretty awesome. How can 3D printing shift the industrial design landscape in the future? Armed with this question, Formlabs partnered with the curious minds at London's Royal College of Art to explore the future of desktop manufacturing. Well, and I suppose they also familiarized a host of potential buyers with its line of 3D printers. Well, during this semester-long industrial design course, students immersed themselves in additive manufacturing technology and explored the ways our lives may shift as 3D printing gains greater adoption. They call it Benchtop Factory, and thus far, it has yielded some some fascinating results. I mean, they're art students, guys, so engineers, chill. Looking at you, hacker. Looking at you. Form key is the physical embodiment of your online passwords. To access your account, you would simply swipe the form key in front of your webcam. How this is quicker than just entering your password, it's, just, it's a thought. It's the thought. Memory impression, which was inspired by the aftermath of the earthquake in Japan, is a pattern-making model designed from the fragments of destroyed possessions that survivors find in the wreckage. Oh, look at that! A creative spin on how- Oh, I hold dear is now in shambles! A creative spin.
try inside. The factory produces one-off custom-made light fittings, and the growing lab is an experimental factory that prints growing vessels. What's a pots? Pots! What's pots? That evolve with the plants. So, so next-gen chia? Somehow I feel like we'll see all of these on an upcoming episode of Shark Tank. QV execs everywhere in the world are just rejoicing. Do you have positive comments or story ideas? Comment below, no snark, and we'll cover them in the next episode. For the PD&D channel, I'm David Manti, and this has been your Engineering Newswire. I saw that